Binoculars? Check. Walkie talkies? Check. Night vision goggles? Check. Grappling hook? Check. Candy in case we get hungry. Ooh, good thinking. All right, let's go spy on the princess. Um, first rule of spy missions is that you don't yell that you're going on a spy mission. <whistles> right, got it. Let's go. Hi kids, I'm Miss Booksy and this is story time. Today we're reading The Princess and the Pea. Chapter one, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Once upon a time, there was a prince named Henry, but everyone called him Hank. Prince Hank was going to be king one day, but first he had to get married. Why do I have to get married? And you have to marry a princess. No substitutes allowed. That was Prince Hank's mother, the queen. It was time for princess interviews. This was where princesses from near and far would come to the palace and meet the prince, hoping to become the next queen. Hey. Hi. You didn't curtsy. Next. Make sure you curtsy. Nope. Next. <laughs> That's gotta hurt. Oh, hello, princess. And what kingdom do you hail from? Oh, I'm not a princess. I work here, remember? <laughs> Prince Hank did not remember. This was Miss Maggie, who had come to the palace to work for the queen. She had been there for ages, but Prince Hank was a little bit self-absorbed. That means he liked himself a lot and didn't care about or notice much else. You work here? What does that mean? Prince Hank was also not very familiar with work. He was a bit what we would call spoiled rotten. I'm a lady-in-waiting to the queen. Waiting? What are you waiting for? The bus? Lady-in-waiting means I wait on or serve the queen, kind of like an assistant. So you're not actually waiting for anything? No. And you're not here to try and marry me? Definitely not. The queen sent me to see if you needed anything. I suppose you could help me if any of these bootleg princesses try to get fresh. Very well. Next. Nope. Next. Wow, that is so mean. This went on for hours. To be or not to be, that is the question. I have the answer. Next. Oh, oh brother. No. As soon as a princess would enter the room, Prince Hank would send them away. Why don't you just talk to any of these princesses? You know, try to get to know them. They might be great. You're being, I hate to say it, a little bit rude, dude. Look, Baggy. Maggie. Whatever. I can't waste my time with girls who aren't queen material. The next queen has to be the real deal. Genuine, bona fide, 100% R-O-Y-U-L-L. -L. That spells royal. No, it doesn't. Um, I'm pretty sure it does. Anyway, these so-called princesses are totally bleh, and I'm bored, so I'm gonna go take a nap. Wait, I, I think there's one more girl. Ugh, fine. Next. Oh, hello. That princess is so beautiful. You look familiar. You remind me of someone I like. Prince Hank liked this princess immediately and invited her to stay at the castle. He was smitten but soon it was clear they actually had a lot in common. I can't wait to see what happens next. She was very picky. Ew, next. She was very into herself. And she was not very polite. Somebody smells like cheese. Not me, I smell good. <laughs> After dinner, everyone went down to the parlor for the evening's entertainment. In an effort to impress the princess, Prince Hank sang a song. I live in a castle, I wear a crown. It's so shiny, it's so awesome. Your turn, princess. Play us a song. Yeah, true love is great, and I love it's not. Then I met my prince. La, 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 la. Wait, no, you need to go higher. Ah. Now it's like this. That was hilarious. Uh, hey, I'm bored now. Where's my bed? That's when the queen leaned over to Maggie and whispered, This is how we'll tell if she's a real princess. The plan was to place one tiny green pea under the mattress in the guest bedroom. You see, supposedly a real princess would be so sensitive, she would feel the teeny tiny lump and not be able to sleep a wink. Maggie thought it was a little silly, but she followed the queen's orders. <laughs> okay, your bed's ready, princess. 
Finally, I'm exhausted. Well, sleep tight. Don't let the bed bugs bite. Ew, gross. Oh, sorry, it's just an expression. <laughs> Good night. What do you think will happen next? Chapter two, here we go. The next morning, Maggie and the Queen eagerly waited for the princess to join them for breakfast. Did their test work? Had she felt the pee? Finally, the princess came down. Good morning, princess. But before they could ask how she slept, the princess said, Oh my gosh, there was a giant lump in the middle of my mattress. I couldn't sleep at all. Oh really? Well, we'll have that taken care of at once. Maggie! On it, ma'am. Ooh, this is so exciting. So Maggie lugged a new mattress all the way up the stairs and plopped it on the bed. <sighs> Surely she won't feel the pee under two mattresses. But the next morning played out the same. Ugh, I couldn't sleep a wink. I could still feel this gigantic pokey lump. So Maggie pulled another mattress up the stairs and put it on the bed. Gah, okay, maybe she could feel the pee with two mattresses, but good luck feeling it with three. <laughs> but you guessed it, the princess once again came down to breakfast, rubbing her eyes and yawning. Once again, Maggie was struggling to get yet another mattress up to the guest room and on top of a now very high bed. And this happened again and again and again and again. Wow, it's so colorful. Finally, Maggie asked the queen, Your Highness, isn't it obvious that the princess is a real princess? She felt the pee every single night, no matter how many mattresses I put on her bed. This is a very serious thing, Maggie. Do you know how many fake princesses there are out there? No. It's a real problem. Whatever you say, your highness. Oh, here she comes. Let me guess, you didn't sleep a wink? Oh, how many does it take? A million? A million mattresses? I'll be dragging around mattresses until I'm an old lady. Hey, Maggie. Prince James. Prince James was Hank's twin brother. He was born four minutes after Hank, and being the younger twin, he would never be king, but he didn't mind. He was totally cool with just being a regular guy. Well, he was still a prince, but he was very laid back. Pretty much the opposite of Hank. That prince is so handsome. Maggie and James had known each other for quite some time and liked each other a lot. They liked to do not so royal things together, like fill up the palace pool with slime, eat ice cream sundaes till their tummies hurt, and sneak into the kitchen to mess with the royal chef's menu. Goose liver pate? No thanks. Let's just change it to pizza. Extra cheese. Ooh, add pineapple. Yep, they were partners in crime. Oh, uh, what you up to? The princess pea chest. The what? Prince Hank can only marry a true royal, and the queen wanted me to make sure that this girl's a real princess, so I put a pea under her mattress. Oh, yeah, I still don't get it. Well, apparently princesses have a super high sensitivity and can feel something as small as a tiny pea under their mattress. And sure enough, this princess has felt it every single night for like two whole weeks. So I just keep stacking mattresses, but she keeps complaining about the pea. Maybe she just likes to complain? That's a possibility. Hey, I have an idea. Let's take the pea out and see if she still says her mattress is lumpy. Ooh, scandalous. Let's do it. Wow, this is so fun. You almost got it. Just a little more. Okay, I see it. Get it, get it. Wow, I can't believe you lugged all those mattresses up there. I'm pretty strong. So, what now? We wait and see how the princess sleeps. It seemed like forever until the princess's bedtime. I win. No way, I always win. Mother always lets me win. You're playing the game wrong. Well, my mother always lets me win, so you're playing it wrong. Want to play again? No, I'm going to go to bed. Gee, I really hope I can sleep tonight. That bed is so lumpy. Anyway, good night, everybody. Good night, my love. Here comes the moment of truth. The next morning, Prince James and Maggie waited for the princess, eagerly awaiting her report. Here she comes. But instead of appearing well rested, the princess looked like she hadn't slept at all. The pee was gone, but the princess said, OMG, I literally tossed and turned all night long. Hmm, that sounds suspicious. 
Really? Yeah, it's like there's this lump right in the middle of the bed. I'm very sensitive to these things, you know, being a princess and all. Uh-oh, this doesn't sound good. To be continued. Chapter three, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Maggie and James were totally confused. I don't get it. We removed the pee, but she says she still felt the lump. She must be making it up, but why would she randomly lie about something like that? I got it. She knows about the princess and the pee test. So she's faking it to seem like a real princess. Yeah, at least I think so. So if she's not a princess, who is she? I don't know, but we have to find out. How can we do that? We spy. Ooh, <laughs> Ooh this is so exciting. James and Maggie both loved a good caper. They excitedly prepared for their super secret spy mission. Okay, do we have everything we need? Let's check. Binoculars? Check. Walkie talkies? Check. Night vision goggles? Check. Grappling hook? Check. Candy in case we get hungry. Ooh, good thinking. All right, let's go spy on the princess. Um, first of all, spy missions is that you don't yell that you're going on a spy mission. Right, got it. Let's go. There she is. What now? Now we just wait for her to reveal her true self. What do you think is gonna happen next? But the princess wasn't up to anything unusual. She did her nails, she read a magazine, she brushed her hair, she washed her face. You know, totally normal stuff. Wait, what? Uh -huh. What? No, that can't be. Ah, she's coming this way. So she's a witch. Major plot twist. But why the princess act? We have to get to the bottom of this. Maggie and James didn't have flying broomsticks, so they couldn't follow the princess, uh, witch, wherever she was going. So they just had to wait and wait and wait and wait. The witch finally came back just before dawn. Oh no, I hope they'll be okay. James and Maggie watched as she emptied out a small bag. What's all that stuff? Wait, shh, listen. Okay, the recipe calls for the eye of a rattlesnake, the whiskers of a catfish, three mouse tails, one ounce of kangaroo sweat. Ew. She's casting a spell. And a lock of stallion hair. Now just stir and voila, the magic potion is ready to serve. Uh-oh. This doesn't sound good. So that's why Hank likes her so much. She's been feeding him love potions. Not on my watch. Let's go stop her. James and Maggie ran to breakfast to thwart whatever wicked plan the witch had cooked up. Okay, so what's our plan? Okay, when she gets down here... Good morning, princess, my love. Ah, she's here! What do we do? Wash her face! Hey, what the heck are you doing? James, stop washing my girlfriend. She's a witch! She's got green under there, and she has a pointy hat, and she flies around on a broomstick, and she cooked up a love potion to make you love her. She's not a real princess at all. She totally pretended to feel the pee under her mattress, but it was all a ruse. She's a witch, I tell ya! The witch? Oh, no. Are you done? Uh, yeah, I guess. Okay, good. Apologize to the princess at once. Didn't you hear what I just said? Your girlfriend's a witch. It's no use, guys. He can't hear anything bad about me. He's in love. Can't you see? The spell is too powerful. That's right. And now you'll love me too. <coughs> oh no, the potion. Now we're going to, we're going to, to, I forget what I was going to say. Oh, really? Oh, hi, princess. You look so so beautiful this morning. Oh, why thank you, James. James, James, you're under her spell, can't you see? You're a pretty princess. Ah, what do I do now? How are they ever gonna get out of this one? Chapter four, here we go. This is terrible. Both princes are under the spell of the witch. Wait, why am I not under the spell? I breathed in the love potion too. Relax, it only works on princes. It's a very specific spell. 
Oh, but why? What are you trying to do? Well, I was trying to marry Prince Hank, but now I guess I have my choice, don't I? Maybe I'll marry Prince James. No! No? Ah, does someone have a crush? Prince James and... What's your name again? Maggie. Maggie, sitting in a tree. K-I-S-S-I-N-G. Shush! First comes love, then comes marriage. Oh, wait, not if I marry him. I can't hear you, la 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 la. Wow, that is so mean. Okay, I have to figure out how to defeat the witch and break the spell. All right, how do you destroy witches? Water! Yeah, I'll just dump a bucket of water on her like Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz. That won't work. And if you mess up my makeup, I will conjure up a curse. So bad. A curse? Oh no. Okay, fine. Ugh, think, Maggie. Oh, Dorothy also crushed a witch with her house. That's your plan? You're gonna smush me with a house? Yeah, I guess not. Ooh, Hansel and Gretel pushed their witch into an oven. No thanks. Face it, Muggy. Maggie. Whatever. Face it, Maggie. I'm going to marry the prince, and you can't stop me. Why do you even want to marry the prince anyway? Aren't we just supposed to marry, like, wizards or ogres or something? Seriously? What? You don't think witches grow up reading fairy tales, too? They do? Yes! And all my life, deep down, I've known that I'm really supposed to be a princess. So when I heard there was a real prince looking for a princess, well, I put on my dress and I hightailed it over here. Ooh, that makes sense. Don't you think it's a little messed up that you used a love potion on Hank? I wanted him to like me. Honestly, I think you guys have a lot in common. I think he'd like you anyways. Really? You think so? Oh my gosh. Well, you know what? I think James likes you too, by the way. Really? I mean, yeah. I guess he's pretty cool. I was only kidding when I said that I might marry him. It doesn't matter. I'm not a princess. I don't know if you noticed, but I wear the same dress literally every single day. Well, except today. These are my spy clothes. Wait, I just got a great idea. Let's do a princess makeover! Fun! Aw, oh, that's so sweet. Their princess makeover party was so much fun. The girls barely noticed that they were totally bonding. Could they really become friends? They sure looked like besties. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, you do know this doesn't technically make me a princess, right? Who cares? If you feel like a princess, you're a princess. End of story. Now let's go get Hank and James and go have some fun. <laughs> princess, my love. No, she's my love. Um, I think you have to break the spell first. Oh, right. Do you have any lizard tails or grasshopper belly buttons? Uh, not on me. Well, that was weird. <laughs> I'll just try a chant. All right, let's see. This should work. Loveth spell brachioso. What happened? I feel weird. Hey, Maggie, cool dress. <laughs> this whole thing. <laughs> Hey, I got an idea. Let's go play mini golf and get some ice cream. Great idea. OMG, I love it. So the four went out on a double date and had a blast. The princess witch was nervous to reveal her true identity to Prince Hank, but he thought it was pretty cool. Ice creamiosa magicus flyeth into my mouth. <laughs> That is amazing! This is seriously so much cooler than being royalty. It took a little convincing for the queen to come around, but she realized that having a royal family member with magical powers could come quite in handy. But most importantly, she saw how happy the princess witch and Hank were. The queen did have one question, though. So did you really feel the pee under all those mattresses? No, I read about that in a fairy tale once, so I thought it was worth a shot. The queen also approved the match between James and Maggie. They were obviously perfect for each other. Yay! So the story ends with the happiest of fairy tale endings. Not just one true love, but two. And a couple of girls who grew up loving fairy tales became real princesses. Pretty cool. Oh, happily ever after. Thanks for coming to Storytime. See you next time. Bye. Hi kids, I'm Miss Booksy and this is Storytime. Today we're reading The Wizard of Oz. 
Chapter one, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Hi, <laughs> I lived in a place called Kansas with my aunt and uncle. <laughs> uncle Henry and Aunt Em. Hello. Hello. We lived on the prairie, which is a great big piece of land that stretches for miles and miles and miles and miles and is very flat. So flat and empty that you could stand in your front yard and see all around you. Oh look, there's Farmer Ted. Hey, Farmer Ted. <laughs> he can't hear me, of course. He's way too far away. What? <laughs> Life on our farm was very hard. Aunt Em and Uncle Henry worked so hard that they never even had time to smile. In fact, when I was little, Aunt Em had completely forgotten what happiness sounded like. So whenever I laughed, she would do this. <laughs> oh, heavens to Betsy, you startled me. Everything at our house looked sad. The hot sun had baked everything until the land and all the buildings and even the people looked dried out and gray. <laughs> That is so sad. Yeah, just like that. Just like an old black and white movie. The only thing that made me happy was my little dog Toto. <laughs> Hi Toto. <laughs> Who's a good boy? Is it you? Is it you? <laughs> Sorry, but come on, look at how cute he is. Okay, on with the story. Here's where things get exciting. So, one day Toto and I were playing fetch with the stick. <laughs> Literally the only toy either of us had, but we made the best of it. <laughs> when we heard a crazy loud sound, it sounded like a train. I know because I rode a train once all the way to Oklahoma. <laughs> anyway, the sound was getting louder and louder and louder. Toto, we have to hide. I think a freight train is coming for us or something. Wait, but there aren't any tracks here. How in the heck? Ah, a flying cow. Dorothy, a cyclone's coming! Cyclone? Oh no, cyclones are super scary. You know what a cyclone is, right? Tornado, twister, dust devil. Ah, this is scary. Yeah, that. Oh no, the house is totally flying. Oh my, this is even more exciting than the train ride. I wonder when we're gonna land, or where we're gonna land. Oh. Toto, I think we've landed. I hope we're not too far from home. I wouldn't know the first thing about moving a house back into the yard. Wow, okay, we're definitely far from home. I bet we're even farther than Oklahoma. <laughs> What's that, a kitty cat? <laughs> <laughs> hey, who are you? He's a munchkin, and he's very grateful to you, noble sorceress. Grateful? To me? Why? Because you squished the Wicked Witch of the East. What? Me? No way! I wouldn't even squish a fly! Ask Toto. But you did squish her. Or your house did anyway. Look! But I didn't do that on purpose, I promise! Don't worry, we're happy she's gone. She was a very wicked witch who ruled over the munchkins for hundreds of years. Really? Yes, she was wicked. She was awful. She was the worst. Are you a munchkin? No, dear, I'm the witch of the north. Oh, a witch? A, a witch? Oh, no. But you seem nice. I thought all witches were wicked. I'm a good witch. Unfortunately, a good witch's powers are never as strong as a wicked one's. But now there is only one wicked witch left. Ah! Ah! Not here, sillies. The last wicked witch rules over the west, and she's even more wicked than her sister. Hey, she's gone. Did she come back to life? Oh no, zombie witches must be the absolute worst. No, no. See, when a witch is defeated, she disappears, poof, like magic. Yay! The munchkins love magic. Oh yeah? <laughs> well, check this out. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I, it was only a trick. I thought you liked magic tricks. Magic's supposed to be nice. That was scary. Sheesh, tough crowd. I probably ought to get back to Kansas. Are you the good witch of Kansas? Me? No, there are no witches in Kansas. <laughs> but you did fly here. Oh, no, that was just my house. <laughs> my house did the flying, but I can't fly. <laughs> I promise I'm not a witch. So anyway. How do I get back? Is there a train or something? Nope, guess you'll just have to stay. Yay, you can be our queen! All hail queen, what's your name? 
Dorothy? All oh, hail, hail Queen, Queen Dorothy! Dorothy. Hooray! Yeah. Hurrah! What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure. Come on! Chapter two, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. The munchkins cheered and celebrated their new queen. Oh, All hail, hail the queen. queen Dorothy! Our queen! But Dorothy didn't want to be queen. She just wanted to go home. I don't want to live in... Wait, what is this place called? Oz, dear. You are in the land of Oz. Why are you sad? Your house is right here. Yes, but it's not in the right place. And I'm sure Uncle Henry and Aunt Em must be so confused. They've never had their whole house just disappear like this. Let us cheer you up. Quick, someone tell a joke. Why didn't the Wicked Witch of the East cross the road? Why? Because you squished her with your house. <laughs> what, too soon? Okay, that's pretty good, but how about this one? I just flew in from Kansas, and boy, my house is tired. <laughs> that was so funny. Okay, anyway, so we were talking about how I might get home. Can't go to the south. It's a great big desert where no one could survive. Except for the quadlings, but they eat sand and drink sunshine. Weird, next. And you can't go east because there are big mountains with giant birds and wapangs. Don't know what that is, but it sounds scary. Next. <laughs> and you could try and go west, but that's where the other wicked witch lives, and she is seriously wicked. No thanks. <laughs> Guys, what am I gonna do? Well, you could go center. Go center? Yes, go straight to the center of Oz, to the city of emeralds. That's where the wizard lives. He can help you get home. The wizard? Is he wicked? Oh, not at all. He's very wise. Well, how do I get to the center? To get to the city of emeralds, one must follow the road of yellow bricks. Road of yellow bricks? That road right there. Will it be dangerous? I will bless you with as much good magic as I can, but you must be careful. Good luck, Dorothy. I'm too tired and hungry to start my journey now. May I stay here a night, Munchkins? Of course you can, Queen Dorothy. The Munchkins were so excited to have Dorothy stay with them, even if it were only for one night. They prepared a feast of beautiful fruits that Dorothy had never seen, and lots of tiny cakes filled with candy and ice cream. Delicious! We want you to have these, Queen Dorothy. Me? Really? Well, you are the one who defeated the Wicked Witch. And they're also way too big for our munchkin feet. They're really beautiful. And legend says they're magic. Maybe they'll protect you on your journey to the Emerald City. Yay, magic to the rescue. Well, they are super comfy and they do match my dress. <laughs> okay, I'll take them. The next morning, Dorothy and Toto said goodbye to the munchkins and began their trip down the yellow brick road when they passed a farm where something odd caught Dorothy's eye. Toto, look at that scarecrow. He almost looks like a real man, doesn't he? <laughs> Did you just wink? Maybe. <laughs> hey, you can talk? I've never seen a talking scarecrow. Well, how do you do, Mr. Scarecrow? Not very well. Oh, no? A lot of crows here? It's not that. I'm just very uncomfortable up here. I mean, I got a pole stuck in my back. But all scarecrows do. Well, trust me, it's terrible. I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. Who's that? The munchkin who put you up there? No, the crows. <coughs> Ugh, get out of here. Oh, right. <laughs> well, why don't you just get down from there? That would be amazing. Why didn't I think of that? Oh, wait, I know. It's because I don't have a brain. You don't? Nope, nothing but straw between my ears. That's too bad. I really like having a brain. At least I think I do. But it's my brain that makes me think that. <gasps> uh, I don't get it. Sorry, I'll help you down. Huzzah! So, what's your name? Oh, how impolite of me. I'm Dorothy from Kansas. I'm on my way to see the Wizard of Oz. The Wizard? I bet he has brains. Yes, and he's gonna help me get back home. Hey, maybe he could give you some brains. Why didn't I think of that? Mm, the whole brain thing. <laughs> oh, right, the brain thing. See, it's really annoying. Well, it's settled. 
you'll come with me to the Emerald City, and the wizard will help me get to Kansas, and he'll give you a break. Huzzah! And off they went to see the wonderful Wizard of Oz. What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter three, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. There they are, Dorothy, Toto, and the Scarecrow traveling the yellow brick road. They walked for miles and miles, and finally, phew, I'm pooped. Let's just sit down and rest for a while. Okay, wait, why? Because I'm tired and hungry. That means I need to eat something. I'm never hungry. Then that's a good thing because my mouth is only painted on. If I cut a hole there, all my straw would fall out. Then you'd have a very funny shaped head. It's true. Dorothy, can you tell me more about Kansas? Sure. I live there with my Aunt Em and Uncle Henry and Toto, of course. <laughs> it's very quiet, except for when there's a cyclone and everything is all gray. <laughs> Not beautiful and colorful like here. Well, why do you want to go back if it's so nice here? Because Kansas is my home, and there's no place like home. Oh, so cute. Then why did you come here in the first place? I didn't mean to. My house just landed here after a storm. Long story. <laughs> and then yada yada, I squished the Wicked Witch of the East, and now I have her shoes. Do you like them? They are very pretty. But wait, did you say you squished the Wicked Witch of the East? Yes, but not on purpose. The munchkins were very happy. <laughs> I'm their queen now. Wow. But enough about me. Tell me your story. Me? I don't know anything. I was only made one day ago. Ooh, tell me about that. Okay. I was made by a farmer. First he made my head and he painted on ears. Then I could hear. Next I had eyes and I could see. Then the farmer painted on a nose. I could smell corn and crows. Ah! Yikes, ah! crows. Luckily, I couldn't scream because I didn't have a mouth yet. So the farmer didn't know that I was afraid of the crows. Imagine a scarecrow scared of crows. Not good. When the farmer finished putting me all together, he stuck me up on a stick in the middle of the field. I didn't like being left alone with all ah! those crows. So I tried to run, but it was no use. I was stuck. The crows all ah! laughed at me and pecked my head and ate up all the farmer's corn right in front of me. They were so mean. That's so sad. Well, except for one very old crow. Just ignore those silly crows. But why aren't they afraid of me? I'm supposed to be a scarecrow. They know you're stuck up here and don't know how to get down. If only you had a brain. And I decided right then that I would get a brain one day. I just didn't know how. Then you came along, and now we're on our way to get me a brain from the great Oz of Emerald City. Speaking of, I'm ready to journey on. Let's go. Dorothy, Toto, and the Scarecrow set off again on the road of yellow bricks. Everything was going just fine until... What was that? You're asking me? I don't have a brain. I don't really know stuff. Oh, right. <laughs> Wait, I think I hear it again. <laughs> Shh, Toto! I hope it's not a crow. Ah! Don't chop me! I would never. <laughs> Why are you groaning? I've been stuck in this position for a whole year. It's very uncomfortable. Well, what can I do to help? Get my oil can, please. Oh, my joints are rusted stiff. Get my neck first. Ah, much better. Wow, this is so fun. Now my arm, please. What a relief. I thought I might be holding that forever. Feel better? A million times better. You saved my life. Dorothy saved my life too. And she squished the Wicked Witch of the East. Whoa, are you a witch? No, why does everyone keep asking me that? I'm just a girl from Kansas. We're on our way to the Wizard of Oz. I'm getting a brain. And I'm hoping to get back home. Do you know the great Oz? I never met him, but hey, do you think he could give me a heart? You don't have a heart? How sad, I think. It is sad, enough to make me cry. But if I cry, I'll get all stiff and rusty again. Well, you absolutely must join us on our trip. To the wizard we go. 
Wait, oil can. Good call. Okay, now to the wizard we go. What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure, come on. Chapter four, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Hey, look, 475 smiles to Emerald City. I think they mean miles. No, distance is measured in smiles in Oz. How long are they? I don't know. Neither do I. But maybe that's because we don't have brains. You don't have a brain either? Nope. I used to have both. And believe me, the heart is more important. Why is that? The heart is the way to love. Love is happiness. And happiness is the best thing in the world. Well, how did you lose your heart in the first place? It's a long story. We like stories. <laughs> okay. I was a wood chopper, chopping trees and selling the wood for a living. Then I met a girl and we fell in love. I asked her to marry me and she said yes. I was so happy. Yay, what a happy ending. There's more. She lived with a selfish old woman who didn't want her to get married. She wanted the girl to stay and work for her forever. The woman went to the wicked witch and paid her to curse me. A curse? Oh no. What did the witch do? She took my leg. How was I supposed to work standing on just one leg? Oh my! I went to a tinsmith who made me a new leg made of tin. The old woman was very mad. She paid for another curse and this time I lost my other leg. The tin smith built me another leg of tin. Then what happened? Next, the witch cursed my arms and my head and all of me until I was a man made of tin. But the girl still loved me and I loved her. The wicked witch did the worst thing she could possibly do. What? what? She cursed my heart. The tinsmith didn't know how to make a new heart for me. And without a heart, I couldn't feel love. I've been sad and lonely ever since. What a sad story. I think. Maybe if I had a brain, I would have understood it better. We'll get you your heart. The wizard is wise and good, and he'll help all of us. I just know it. The gang continued toward the city of Emeralds, saddened by the Tin Woodman story. But soon, sadness gave way to scaredness. These woods are kind of scary. I wonder how many more smiles until we're out of here. We're safe. I have my oil can. The scarecrow can't feel anything. And you have the mark of the good witch and the magic slippers. But Toto, what's protecting him? We are. Ah, we are? Oh, Whew, that was a close one. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. A big beast like you biting a poor little dog. I didn't bite him. No, but you tried to. You're nothing but a great big coward. I know, I'm sorry. Going after a scarecrow, a tin man, and a tiny dog. Oh, scarecrow, that sounds scary. See, I'm the most cowardly coward who ever lived. It's okay to be scared sometimes, but you can't go around picking on smaller things just so you can feel brave. Where'd you get your courage? I don't know. I guess I've just naturally been tough. I wish I was tough. I've always been afraid of everything. Bears, spiders, kittens. Kittens? Who's afraid of kittens? Mice are, but I'm afraid of mice too. Hi, Vey. Let's go, guys. Wait, you're just gonna leave me here? Out in these scary woods all by myself? Let me come with you. I'll protect you. Oh, you will, will you? <laughs> I'm really sorry I scared you. It was a silly old thing to do, I know. I just wanted to look fearless. Oh, please tell Toto I'm sorry too. Wait. <laughs> We're going to see the Wizard of Oz. I'm going to get a brain. And I'm getting a heart. Maybe the wizard could give you courage? Is the wizard very scary? Wait, never mind. I don't even care. I'll go ask the Wizard of Oz for courage. See, you're already a little braver. <laughs> what are you asking the wizard for? I just want to go home to Kansas. Is Kansas a scary place? Wait, wait, don't tell me. I don't want to know. Then let's go find that wizard. What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure, come on.
chapter five. Here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Dorothy, the Scarecrow, the Tin Man, the Lion, and Toto were officially off to see the wizard. The Scarecrow would ask for brains, the Tin Man for a heart, and the Lion would get some courage. And that is, if he could work up the nerve to ask. <laughs> and of course, Dorothy and Toto would ask the good wizard to get back home to Kansas. All they had to do was follow the road of yellow bricks. Uh-oh. Now why wouldn't they build a yellow brick bridge as well? It doesn't look so far. I could probably jump across. Well, look who's being brave. <laughs> I'd be way too scared to cross. Now why'd you have to go and say that? For a second I forgot I was a Freddy cat. You can do it. Don't be scared. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. But you're gonna have to carry each of us across one at a time. You mean I have to do it more than once? Take me first. I'm made of straw, so if you drop me, I won't be hurt. All you have to do is stuff me back together. Good thinking. And I don't even have a brain. And me with no courage. What a team. Here we go. Wow, this is so fun. Woohoo, you did it. I knew you could. <laughs> the cowardly lion bravely carried across the others one by one. Oh, great work. <laughs> Now let's go meet the wizard! The gang marched forth and soon found themselves in a very dark and scary forest. I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay. Nope, nope, not okay. What is that? Kalitas! What's a Kalita? A very scary creature. Well, you thought Toto was scary, so... <laughs> Kalitas had the body of a bear and the head of a tiger. Oh my! Uh, that is scary! Told ya! Oh, what are we gonna do? Run! That's way too far to jump across. How are they ever gonna get out of this one? Hey, the Tin Man could cut down that tree and we could use it to walk across. Splendid idea. Okay, steady now. The Kalitas are coming! Oh, yay, we all made it. Kalitas! Ah! I've got it! Tin Man, chop this side of the tree. Ah! Phew, that was close. Great job, Tinny. <laughs> hey, it was the Scarecrow's idea. You sure you don't already have a brain in there? <laughs> Just straw, I'm sure of it. If you say so. You guys ready to hit the yellow brick road again? Just a second, my heart is racing. Ooh, can I listen? Wow, what a ticker. You'll get one soon. And I'll get my courage. And I'll get my brain. Let's go. It had been a long and scary journey so far, but they were determined to find the wonderful Wizard of Oz even if it meant they might run into the Wicked Witch of the West. <laughs> what do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure, come on. Chapter six, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Dorothy, Toto, the Scarecrow, the Tin Woodman, and the Lion continued along the road of yellow bricks, anxious and excited to find the wizard. Look, a river. Oh good, I sure am thirsty after all that jumping and running. Um, guys, how are we going to get across? Again? Okay, seriously, who designed this road? This is just poor planning. It's too wide for me to jump. It's too wide for the tree thing. Hey, what if I chop some wood and build a raft? Great idea! <laughs> the Tin Woodman got to work and soon built a perfectly seaworthy vessel. The gang hopped on and began to paddle toward the other shore. There she is! The brat who squished my sister! It's payback time, sweetheart! <sighs> Suddenly, the wind picked up and the river began rushing. Oh no! We're floating away from the yellow brick road! And straight for the land of the Wicked Witch of the West! The scariest witch of all! The witch? Oh no! What are we gonna do? Well, I can't swim! I'll fall apart! And I'll rest! Pedal harder! They all paddled as hard as they could, but the poor Scarecrow got his paddle stuck in the mud, and the raft went rushing on down the river without him. Scarecrow! Dorothy! We'll come back for 
for you, I promise! Well, here I am stuck on a pole again, and this time in the middle of a river. I guess I'll never get any brains. Maybe I can swim against the current. What about us? Grab a hold of my tail and I'll pull you to shore. Ah, there's a fish! It's just a tiny little goldfish. It touched me! Phew, we made it. But where are we? We're so far from the yellow brick road and our poor scarecrow. This is so sad. Don't cry, you'll rust. We'll just have to walk along the river until we find him. Dorothy, Toto, the lion, and the tin man walked along the river looking for their friend. <gasps> there he is! Shoo! Ah! Go away! Whew, that was a close one. Dorothy, you came back! Of course! We're here to save you! Okay, yeah, um, how are we gonna do that? There's no wood on this side of the river, so I can't build another raft! Lion, can you swim out there to rescue him? I'm so tired and weak from all the swimming. Plus, I'm scared of crows. A lion scared of a crow? That's silly. Ah, big stork! Our friend is out there stuck. We have to save him. He's coming with us to find the Wizard of Oz. This isn't the right road. You need the yellow one. We know, we just got a little off track. <laughs> but now we can't leave until we save the Scarecrow. I can try to lift him. Mind you, I'm used to carrying babies, not straw people. He might be too heavy. Oh, he's very light. Okay. Oh no, incoming! Oh shush, I'm here to save ya. Whoa! Hooray! Thank you so much! <laughs> no prob. Well, I better be on my way. Watch out for the Wicked Witch of the West. She's a tough nut. We will. See ya. <laughs> well, gang, shall we? Yup. I think the yellow brick road is just across this field of flowers. Ooh, poppies. They're so pretty. <laughs> yes, they are. And just wait until you smell them. The Wicked Witch of the West knew these poppies gave off a very powerful scent, one that would make even the largest beast fall into a never-ending sleep. When you're asleep, I'll take back those sapphire slippers, and then you'll be powerless! I'm getting sleepy. <sighs> Me too. Sweet dreams! <laughs> what do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure, come on! Chapter seven, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. We really need to get back to the yellow brick road. But maybe just a little nappy wappy voiced. Yeah, <sighs> nighty night. That's right, go to sleep, Dorothy. Now, time for mama to get some new shoes. <laughs> okay, let's try this again. Must be having a nightmare, scaredy cat. Okay, back to the shoes. Ha, they're mine. Wait a second. They're stuck. The witch pulled with all her might, but she could not remove the shoes. They must be protected by magic. Well, I also have magic and my flying monkeys. The Wicked Witch of the West summoned her flying monkeys. Sup, boss? Take this girl to my castle. Aye, aye. <laughs> How is Dorothy gonna get home now? Sleep tight, boys. When you wake, your little friend Dorothy will be long gone, and the sapphire slippers will be mine. All mine! <laughs> Once the flying monkeys had carried Dorothy away from the poppies, the flower's power wore off, and Dorothy woke up. <laughs> this frightened the monkeys. <laughs> and they promptly dropped Dorothy to the ground below. Okay, that was scary. But look, I'm back on the yellow brick road. But what about my friends? If I go back for them, the poppies will make me fall asleep forever. What to do? Dorothy thought and thought, but she couldn't come up with a solution. Until... Wait a second, these shoes are supposed to be magical. And the good witch supposedly blessed me with some kind of magic. I must be able to do something. Hmm. Dorothy tried to get her magic shoes to come up with something magic. She tapped them together. She tried doing a dance routine. She tried saying some magic sounding words. Ta-da! Abracadabra! 
Kazam! But nothing seemed to work. It's useless. What is? Who said that? I did! Down here! That is amazing! Oh, hi! <laughs> you seemed upset just now. Anything I can do to help? I don't think so. My friends and I are supposed to go see the Wizard of Oz, but we fell asleep in that field of poppies over there. But then I woke up and these flying monkeys were carrying me away. I screamed and they dropped me. And here I am. Flying monkeys, eh? They work for the Wicked Witch of the West. Oh no. But it's a good thing you got out. The poppies are very dangerous. Your friends will sleep forever if we don't save them. But how do we do that? The other mice and I can go get them. We've lived here forever and the poppies don't bother us. But my friends are way too big for mice to carry. They may be too much for one mouse alone, but the whole crew, piece of cake. The mouse squeaked out a call to the other mice and soon there were hundreds of mice gathering around Dorothy. You wait here, we'll be back in a sec. And the mice scurried off into the field of poppies. Dorothy waited and soon she saw her friends, still in a deep sleep, being carried across the flowers. You should have warned us that one of your friends is a scary lion! Oh, he's not that scary at all. Watch! <laughs> Eek! Mouse! See? What's going on? We all fell asleep in the field of poppies, and then the wicked witch's flying monkeys took me. But then I fell down here, and these lovely mice helped save you. How kind! And look, we're so close to the Emerald City! Let's go! Bye-bye, mouse friends. Thanks again for helping us. Anytime. Goodbye. And once again, Dorothy and her friends were off to see the wonderful Wizard of Oz. What do you think is going to happen next? Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter 8, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Dorothy and the gang skipped along the yellow brick road, and before long, they saw it. <gasps> the Emerald City. Whoa. Let's go. Hello. Yes. We're here to see the wizard. And why, may I ask? Because I want a brain. And I a heart. I want courage. And I want to go home to Kansas. Hold, please. Mm -hmm. Yes? Oh, OK. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, I see. Hmm. <laughs> oh, very well. OK, goodbye. The wizard will see you. Wonderful. Yes, he is. Right this way. Dorothy and the gang were led through the all-green, very sparkly, emerald-laden city. Wow! Pretty! I find this green very soothing. You first. Wish me luck. I hope they'll be okay. Hello? What do you want? Hi, sir. I want to ask you, please, if you will help me return home. Where is home? Kansas, sir. Oh, you don't say. Oh, have you been there? <clears throat> and why should I grant you this request? Because you're wonderful, and everyone says so. Even the Good Witch of the North said so. She did? I mean, how do you know her? Oh, I met her in the Munchkin Land. See, I landed in Oz rather accidentally. My house, it got swept up in a tornado, and I... It landed on the Wicked Witch of the East, and it squished her. Long story short, everybody told me to come here and that you could help me get home to Kansas. So, will you help me? You squish the Wicked Witch? Yes. I will help you get home. You will? Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you! But you must do something first. Anything. Your wish is my command. You must defeat the Wicked Witch of the West. Hold up, what? You squish the Wicked Witch of the East. Now go squish the Wicked Witch of the West. But I didn't mean to hurt the first witch. That was an accident. I couldn't hurt anyone on purpose. Not even a Wicked Witch. Then I cannot help you. Next. Dorothy was devastated. She went out to the others and tried to hide her disappointment. That is so sad. How did it go? It was interesting. Good luck in there, Scarecrow. But the Scarecrow went in and came out just as disappointed as Dorothy. Then the Tin Man, then the Lion. Turns out they all got the same answer. Unless they defeated the Wicked Witch of the West, the wizard would not help them. I'll never get a brain. I'll never have a heart. I'll never get courage. And I'll never see Aunt Em or Uncle Henry or Kansas ever again. <laughs> What's wrong? The wizard told us he can't help us unless we go squish the Wicked Witch of the West. <laughs> Oof, scary. Well, good luck. 
We're not gonna do it. Come on, guys. Let's go. Where to? I don't know. Maybe we can go look for the Good Witch of the North. Maybe she'll help us. But when Dorothy and her friends left the Emerald City, they were in for a surprise. <laughs> oh, Dorothy! The Wicked Witch of the West? Run! But the Wicked Witch was too fast for them. Her flying monkeys swooped in and snatched up the whole gang. Take that scarecrow and scatter his straw around till he's just a pile of clothes. And put that tin man in the recycling bin. Put the lion in a cage and sell him to the zoo! What about her? Take Dorothy to my castle. I'll take care of her. <laughs> now fly, monkeys! Fly! Uh-oh, kids. This does not look good. What do you think is going to happen next? Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter 9. Here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. The Wicked Witch of the West had ordered the flying monkeys to carry Dorothy and her friends to different locations. The Tin Man was to be put in the recycling bin, the Scarecrow pulled into pieces, and the Lion locked away and sold to the zoo. Dorothy's fate was to be delivered to the Witch's Castle, a visit she was not looking forward to. Hey, guys, how about just dropping me off here? I'll, I'll run along and I'll never bother the Wicked Witch again. No way. Yeah, sorry, kid. You do not want to make the Wicked Witch angry. Yeah, I guess you're right. But the good news is, we won't hurt you. Okay, good to know. Thanks, but why? You wear the sapphire slippers. They're magic. Yeah, I heard that, but they haven't done anything magical so far. Well, you better watch out. The witch is definitely going to try to take those. The witch? Oh, no. The flying monkeys were right. The Wicked Witch of the West wanted nothing more than to get those sapphire slippers from Dorothy. When she arrived at the witch's castle, Dorothy was forced to do chores. And all the while, the witch watched, just waiting to take the shoes. Gotta get those shoes. Don't you want to change before you sweep up all that garbage? You'll get your shoes dirty. I'm okay, thanks. Oh, that floor is going to get slippery. Don't you think you should wear some less slippery shoes? Get it? Because they're slippers? But seriously, get me the shoes! I got it. Good one. But no, I'm okay in these shoes. Jeez, she really wants these shoes. And why is this castle so dirty? Ew. The witch waited and waited, but the only time Dorothy ever removed her slippers was when she took a bath. But the wicked witch was dreadfully afraid of water, so she never dare tried to steal them during bath time. I guess I'll just have to wait a little longer. Drat! Then one day, the witch's wait was finally over. How are they ever gonna get out of this one? Dorothy was dusting a super high shelf when one of her slippers slipped right off. I got it! <laughs> it's mine! It's mine! Now give me the other one! Give me! No! You give me! You're powerless with only one shoe! So are you! Give it! No! Come on! Stop it! Ah! Now look what you've done! What's another mess? You make me clean all day anyway. Not that! I'm melting! Say what now? I'm melting! You melted me! You knew I couldn't touch water! I thought you were just afraid of it! Now you've destroyed me just like you destroyed my sister! You're a terrible girl! You're a bad, no good, stinking. Blah, 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 blah. But the witch melted before she could get out the last insult. Oh, I guess that's why she hated water. Who would have thunk it? Suddenly, Dorothy heard a familiar sound. It was a clanking of metal, a kind of swooshing sound, followed by a ferocious roar. Hey guys, how did you get here? I thought I'd never see you again. Wow, this is so fun. No time to explain now. We have to rescue you from the Wicked Witch. Come on. Thanks, but it's all good. She melted. <laughs> uh. oh, I'll explain later too. Let's go see the wizard. Oh yeah, now he'll grant our wishes. Hooray! Hooray! The gang set out on their journey back to the Emerald City. The Scarecrow would get his brains, the Tin Man would get his heart, the Cowardly Lion would get his courage, and Dorothy and Toto would finally go back home to Kansas. And when they arrived, the wizard did not seem happy to see them. What are you doing here? I told you not to come back until you destroyed the Wicked Witch. And we have your greatness. 
This is not a joke. I know. She's gone. Dorothy melted her. Accidentally, but yeah, she's gone. <laughs> so we've come back so you can grant our wishes. Let's keep reading. Oh, I forgot to say please. Please, sir. <laughs> I cannot grant your wishes. Now go away. Wait, what? What do you mean you can't grant our wishes? So I can't go home to Kansas? Uh, I won't get a brain. I won't get a heart. I won't get any courage. This is baloney. You're supposed to be some wise and wonderful wizard. You're a charlatan, a humbug. Where are you? If you won't give me courage, then at least get some for yourself and come out and face us. Who are you? The wizard? What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure, come on. Chapter 10, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. So you're the mighty and wonderful Wizard of Oz? Well, I'm actually from Omaha, Nebraska. See, I landed here accidentally some years ago and I somehow convinced everyone that I was a wizard and well, here we are. So you're not a wizard. So you don't have any power. Um, no, not at all. Then we came all this way and did all of this for nothing? But you did destroy the Wicked Witch. That's a pretty big deal. How did you do it? Dorothy and the gang explained how it all went down. First, of course, they had been captured by the flying monkeys. The scarecrow had been pulled apart and scattered in a field. He lay in pieces when he suddenly had a bright idea. He knew that crows are pretty clever, so he called out and asked them to help put him back together, and they did. Once he was back to his old self, the scarecrow went to find the Tin Man. The Tin Man had been sold for scrap at a salvage yard and was feeling sadder than ever. But the scarecrow put him back together, polished him up, cause he had rusted quite a bit from crying. That is so sad. And they set off to find the lion. The lion had been locked up in a tiny cage and sold to the zoo. It was not a nice zoo at all. It was gloomy and full of terrible creatures like Kalinas. Remember those? Very scary. Not a good place for a lion with no courage. There, the scarecrow had another bright idea. He asked the Tin Man to use a bit of his metal to pick open the lock on the cage. And then, the lion was free! It was time to save Dorothy. But first, the Tin Man stopped to unlock each and every cage because it made him too sad to see any creature locked up, even Kalita's. The Scarecrow, the Tin Man, and the Lion headed toward the Wicked Witch's castle. They were all very scared, especially when the flying monkeys saw them and swooped in. But the Lion put on his brave face and roared, making all the monkeys fly away shrieking. He was ready to take on the Wicked Witch too, but when they got inside the castle, they found Dorothy had already melted her. And so, there you have it. That's how we defeated the Wicked Witch. Too bad it was all for nothing. That's not true. You've saved everyone in Oz from the Wicked Witch. You'll be celebrated here forever, Dorothy. You'll be a star. That is amazing. But I just want to go home. And I want a brain. I want my heart. And I want my courage. Scarecrow, you already have brains. How else could you have figured out how to put yourself and the Tin Man back together? It was your idea how to pick the lock on the cage, too. Hey, yeah. I guess it was. See? You've had brains the whole time. And you, Tin Man, you've shown you have a heart. You freed all the animals in the zoo. Well, they looked unhappy. I wanted to help. That's heart. And Lion, you showed bravery when you stormed the witch's castle. And you certainly seemed brave a moment ago when you were roaring at me. Oh yeah, sorry about that. No worries. But don't you guys see? You've had what you were looking for the whole time. But what about Dorothy? Hmm, Dorothy. Let's see what we can do. Hey, what about the magic shoes? Dorothy, can you use them to get home? Magic shoes? You've got the sapphire slippers? That makes you the most powerful person in Oz. Do you know how to use them? Mm, nope, no idea. I'll bet the good witch knows. Scarecrow, you're really on a roll here with all the brain stuff. That's a great idea. So the wizard sent out a call to the good witch of the north. Yay, magic to the rescue. Dorothy, my dear, how are you? I'm so glad you made it to the Emerald City to see the great and powerful wizard. Yeah, about that. We'll chat later. 
But now, we need to get this girl home to Kansas. And we were thinking... I was thinking... I do that now. Yes. The Scarecrow was thinking you would know how to use the magic of the sapphire slippers to get home. So do you? Oh yes! It's quite simple. Take three steps in the sapphire shoes and say your wish. And then I'll be home. And then you'll be home. What? It's that easy? <laughs> Wait! You have to say goodbye first! Oh, right. I almost forgot that I would never see you again. Oh, wow. <laughs> Don't! You'll rust! Tin Man, I'll never forget how kind you are. You have a wonderful heart. <laughs> Thank you, Dorothy! <laughs> Someone better get his oil can. Lion, you're braver and fiercer than any Kalita in the whole land of Oz. Thank you for protecting us on our journey. Oh shucks, Dorothy. I'll miss ya. I'll even miss your terrifying dog, Toto. Be nice, Toto. <laughs> Scarecrow, you've been with me the longest. I don't think we would have made it without your quick thinking. I think you're the real wizard here. Oh, Dorothy, do you have to go? I do. I miss my family and my house and... Hey, wait a sec. My house is in Munchkinland. Huh. I wonder where Auntie Em and Uncle Henry live now. Well, I better go. I love you guys and I'll miss you. Come on, Toto. We'll miss you. We love you. Bye, Dorothy. Dorothy took three steps and said, take me home to Kansas. And in a flash, Dorothy and Toto were back in Kansas. It was more colorful than she had remembered, but maybe that's just because Dorothy was so happy to be home. Hi kids, Miss Booksy here with a Cool School exclusive. Today, I'm going to interview a real witch. <laughs> Super scary, huh? I mean, witches are always flying around on broomsticks and casting spells and being wicked, right? <laughs> well, we'll see. Help me welcome to the stage, the one, the only. Oh, I realize I don't know her real name, so come on out, witch! Hey, how are you? Happy to be here. Hi there, so what is your name? Alfred Boogers. Wow, that's beautiful. <laughs> so tell me, how did you first become a witch? Were you born a witch? Did you go to a school for wizards and witchcraft? Ooh, do you play Quidditch? I was born into a family of witches. My mother was a witch, my mother's mother was a witch, and my mother's mother's mother was a witch. What about your mother's 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 mother? Was she a witch? No, she was an accountant. Oh, <laughs> so what was your first spell? I turned the family cat into a chihuahua. What? I'm a dog person. Interesting. I always thought witches like cats. That's just a stereotype. Anyway, my spells got really good when I got my first bubbly cauldron. Ooh, tell me about that. What was the first thing you cooked up in your cauldron? First thing was chili. I make excellent chili, award winning. Spicy but not too spicy, light on the beans. Oh, okay, but what kind of spells did you first cook up? Oh, right. Let's see. Uh, one time I put in the hair of a yeti, the fingernail of a meerkat, one lizard's tongue, a dash of cinnamon, and the eye of a newt. And what did that do? Made my entire kindergarten class levitate. You kids get back down here this minute or I'm calling the principal. That sounds fun. Want me to levitate you? Are you serious? Um, yes please. <laughs> do you have a bubbling cauldron? I have a crock pot. Eh, it's okay. I can just use my wand. Abracadabra! Oh, this is so cool! <laughs> oh, hey, you have some schmutz on your hat. Oh, thanks. Hey, how do I get down? Hocus pocus. Ow! Whew. Sorry about that. The landing is the hottest part. <laughs> so, most people think of witches as wicked villains, but you actually weren't the bad guy in Snow White. Yeah, the evil queen was the villain there. I mean, her name is Evil Queen. What do you expect? Have you ever done anything truly wicked? Hmm, one time I cut the line at Disney World. For which ride? It was the line for the Bippity Boppity Boutique. Ooh, that is wicked. But I was such a cute princess. Fair enough, everyone deserves a princess moment. Exactly. Just one more question before you go. Is it annoying when people dress up as witches for Halloween? Not at all, I love it. Imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, you know. Plus, I blend right in and go trick-or-treating. Witches love candy, by the way. You can quote me on that. What a great story. Thanks for coming to Storytime. See you next time, bye. 
Hi kids, I'm Miss Booksy and this is Storytime. Today we're reading Rumpelstiltskin. Wiggle, snap, story time. Long, long ago, there was a dad and he had a kid, a daughter actually. That's me. <laughs> Together, we made fine designer clothing. The clothes we made were so fancy that the king wanted to wear them. The clothes you make are fantastic. Ah, oh, gee, thank you, King. Thanks a whole kit and caboodle. But my daughter's the real artist. She's so delicate when she's spinning. I bet she could spin straw into gold. Well, as you might know, kings like gold. They like gold a lot. Gold, you say? Hmm. I'd like to meet this daughter of yours. Send her to my castle for brunch this Sunday. We'll have melba toast and salmon locks. So that Sunday, I went to the king's castle for brunch. But instead of Melba toast and salmon locks, oh, I got horse hay and dungeon locks. Oh dear, the king locked me away in the dungeon. What? No, that can't be. You can come out once you spin all this straw into gold. I didn't actually know how to spin straw into gold. That was just a figure of speech. Somebody please help me. Why, hello there. A little elf man appeared. I see you need to sew some straw into gold. That happens to be my specialty. Mm, that's pretty random. <laughs> but okay, I don't have much, but I'll give you anything. Hmm, how about that necklace of yours? It's very pretty. And even though this necklace was a gift for my BFF Snow White, I made the deal. I couldn't be stuck in this stinky dungeon forever. What would you do if you were there? The elf man worked his magic. He sang while he worked, which was kind of annoying, but he was helping me out. <laughs> when the king came back in the morning, the hay was gone, and in its place, pure gold. The king was utterly flabbergasted. I'm utterly flabbergasted. Well, I'm pretty good at this, uh, obviously. <laughs> good, I want more. So this time I'm going to give you 100 times the hay. If you can spin it all to gold by morning, I will let you out. But if not, you will be sent out into the ocean on a leaky ship, never to return. Oh, and the ship will be full of singing mice who are terrible singers. <laughs> now get back to sewing. How are they ever gonna get out of this one? Mean? So night came and I didn't know what else to do. So I, I called out. Uh, hey, magic little dude. Um, I forgot your name, but I, uh, I need you. So, you need more help, do you? I do. I do. I do. It's gonna cost you. Anything. I'll give you anything you want. Pinky promise. Again, he sang as he worked. Spinning, sewing, gold glowing, taking hay and making it pay. It took all night, and I got seriously tired of that song, but my little friend sewed every last bit of straw into gold. Thank you, thank you, thank you. How much do I owe you? On the night of your first son's first birthday, I will return to take him as my own. Wow, that is so mean. And he laughed all crazy like and oh, disappeared. Wait, what? He didn't say he was going to take my son on his first birthday, did he? Nah, that would be crazy. The next day, the king saw all that gold and he was so excited, he let me go. So fast forward a bit. I'm in charge of my own designer clothing company. I'm married, I have a super cool house, a dog and a cat. I had forgotten all about the little elf who had spun straw into gold. I was living happily ever after. Until the night of my first son's first birthday. We were all celebrating, having a great time, when the little old elf crashed the party. Here I am. Give me that baby. Ah, watch out. Okay, funny story. I thought you were kidding. <laughs> Isn't that funny? <laughs> Not really. You made a pinky promise. Okay, okay, I'll, I'll give you gold. Tons of gold. I don't need gold. I can turn star into gold myself, remember? But I'll make a deal with you, lady. If you can guess my name, then you keep your son. But if you don't, I'll take him and your first daughter. Do we have a deal? 
I began to guess. Paul, nah, Mike, nah, Mark, nah, Sean. Uh -uh. Sean spelled S-E-A-N. Nope. Sean spelled S-H-A-U-N. Not even close. Mm, Tim, nope. Tom, nope. Tyler, nope. Taylor, uh -uh. Kanye, Dragon. Senior, nope. Junior. Nope. Oh, nope. I guessed hundreds of names, hundreds upon hundreds of names, but I just couldn't come up with it. To make matters worse, the horrible little elf was leaning over the baby's crib, singing a lullaby. That's my job. I'll have a son, I'm gonna win. She'll never guess my name, cause it's Rumpelstiltskin. Just then, the baby giggled and spoke his very first word. He said, Rumpelstiltskin. Everyone was so excited, as they always are when babies say their first words. What did he say? Nothing. Um, I think he wants his bottle. Rumpelstiltskin, Rumpelstiltskin. Your name is Rumpelstiltskin. No, no, no. <laughs> Yay, I'm so happy. But seriously, we called the police a long time ago anyway. You think you're just gonna come in here and take my baby? I'm his mom. <laughs> you're a bad elf and you're going to jail. And so we were free from Rumpelstiltskin forever. So my family went on a vacation cruise to celebrate and the mice on this ship were excellent singers. <laughs> The brunch buffet was pretty good, too. Smoked salmon with perfection. Mwah! The end. Wow, that was so much fun. Thanks for coming to Storytime. See you next time. Bye. Hi, kids. I'm Miss Booksy, and this is Storytime. Today, we're reading Treasure Island. Chapter one, here we go. Wiggle, snap, Storytime. Yo, ho, ho, and a bottle of brew. Uh -oh. oh my gosh, are you okay? Will a parrot eat a cracker? I don't know, this is New England. Not a lot of parrots around here. Do they? They do indeed, and I'm okay. Just give me a minute. Sure I can't give you a hand? Ah, uh, could you? A hand would be great. Ah, uh, I'm sorry. I'm okay, I just need a rest. And I've had quite a journey. Pirates, buried treasure, typhoons, sharks, etc., etc. Wow, that is so cool. Whoa, really? Yeah, Arr, and now I need a place to lie low. Hide out. Ooh, are you hiding from pirates? Yes, I am. Cool. Well, you can hide out here as long as you want. We got a bed and breakfast upstairs. Great, and could you hide my trunk? Back there ought to work just fine. Sure thing, it looks like a treasure chest. Yo ho ho and a bottle of cola. <laughs> And that's how I met the sea captain. After that, my life changed forever. Pretty soon, everybody in town was friends with the sea captain. For somebody who was hiding out, he sure did a lot of talking. He told all kinds of wild stories, like the time. Got my hand bitten off by a vicious barracuda. Hey! Oof, that's gotta hurt. I fought off a shark with one hand. Not today, Hammerhead. And then there was the sea captain's number one hit. The time I found Captain Flint's treasure map, I was on the run from Long John Silver. You know Long John Silver, right? No. Yes. He's got a peg leg and a hook hair and an eye patch. And thank goodness for that patch, because his one eye is the evilest eye you ever saw. If he had two evil eyes, one look from him, and he'd strike you dead. Ooh. And get this, he even has a parrot that sits on his shoulder. Uh-oh, they better watch out. Okay, so, back to the treasure map. Did you find the treasure? No, sadly, I never got the chance. Long John Silver chased me halfway around the globe, trying to get that map. Is Long John Silver still chasing you? I reckon he is. And if he ever shows up here well, old Jimmy's gonna give me the signal. Yeah, like this. That's a good signal. And lickety split, I'll be gone. And then I'll go find the treasure. Gold, rubies, diamonds, you name it. Pearls? Yeah. Sapphires? For sure. Chocolate coins wrapped in gold foil? Probably. Wow. And a ro ho ho and a bottle of brew. La 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 la. Every day with the sea captain was full of tall tales and excitement. But then one day the sea captain got sick. So sick, in fact, that he couldn't get out of bed. So sick, he couldn't go on any new adventures. 
that's when he told me to open the trunk. He said there was something special in there. He said, When you find it, you'll know what to do. My time is up, little buccaneer. This is your story now. That is so sad. Ooh, some dirty socks. Hello? Ah! Ah! And what's this? Holy macaroni? It's the treasure map! Ooh, interesting. Let's read another story, come on. Chapter two, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. A real treasure map? Wow, but to find a treasure map and have absolutely no idea what to do about it, well, that just doesn't feel so good. And as bad luck would have it, guess who showed up? Peg leg, hook hand, eye patch, evil eye, shoulder parrot? Squawk, Long John Silver's here. Squawk, make way for Long John Silver. Uh, watch out. Time for the signal. But then, I remembered that the sea captain was gone. This was my fight now. I had to be brave. Oh, hi, uh, what's up? Can I help you with something? Yes, I think you can. Has an old sea captain been through these parts? Perhaps dragging a trunk that looks like a treasure chest? A hook for a hand like this? Hmm, let me think. Uh, yeah, nope, that doesn't sound familiar. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to go feed my cat. She's lying! She's lying! Liar, liar, pants on fire! What? No! What? <laughs> the sea captain. He has my treasure map. I want it back. Oh, right, 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 right. One moment. Whew, that was a close one. What's that say? Need help. I've got your back. Selena Garns, attorney at law. The shot. Hi, I need some help. Long story, but here goes. So I met the sea captain. I thought maybe he was a pirate, but he wasn't. He was just a regular sea captain, but he was running from a real pirate and a scary one named Long John Silver because he had a stolen treasure map. A treasure map, huh? That leads to real treasure? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Hmm, I can work with that. 10% of the cut plus expenses, and I'm in. So Selena Barnes, attorney of law, helped me charter a boat. We found a boat captain and a crew. We even went shopping for some new pirate treasure hunting duds. Wow, this is so fun. And then we were off, sailing away from home and headed out into the great wide open, setting sail on our maiden voyage, heading down to the sunny tropics to get some treasure and... <laughs> Apparently, now I'm seasick. Whew. Once I got my sea legs, I went for a little looky-loo around the boat. That's when I heard something interesting. Ooh, I think it's a whale, but not that. This, listen. So LJS is on his way. As soon as we get to Skeleton Island, we'll mutiny, and then we'll take the treasure. Hmm, that sounds suspicious. Mutiny? That doesn't sound good. Wait, what does that mean? I better go ask the captain. But wait a second, who's LJS? It's not... Long John Silver says these guys don't know nothing about pirate stuff. They'll be total pushovers. Long John Silver! I should have known he was gonna chase after us. Uh-oh, this is not good. So off I went to find the captain. Captain! Captain Smallish! Captain! Hey, hey, Captain! Captain! Nah! Captain! Phew, I'm glad I found you. You gotta hear this. I overheard the other crew guys saying that Long John Silver, the pirate, is chasing us. And when we get to the island, they're going to mutiny and take the treasure. By the way, what does mutiny mean? It's when a ship's crew takes over and ousts the captain. Cool, cool, what's oust mean? It means to get rid of. Generally speaking, it's not good. Right, oh no. I hope they'll be okay. So what do we do? We play it cool. Okay, so like wear sunglasses and say things like, hey man, slap me fat. No, we act like nothing's amiss. We're outnumbered. If we fight them now, we're doomed. So we play it cool, but in the meantime, we'll make a plan. Okay, so the plan is to make a plan. I like it. And how close could Long John Silver be? He's probably way behind us. Or so we hoped. Arr! There they be! 
Onward, ho! Giddy up, let's go! That treasure map will be mine in no time! Ha ha ha! Squawk! Giddy up! Giddy up! Ha ha ha! Whoa, that was scary. Let's go on another adventure! Come on! Chapter 3, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time! Ah, we're so close I can smell the treasure. All I smell is parrot dander and feet. Squawk! Parrot dander and feet! Squawk! Back on our ship, we were still hatching our plan. We had to figure out how to deal with the mutineers, aka the bad guys, on our ship. And we had to figure out how to deal with Long John Silver once he caught up with us. Hey, no one ever said treasure hunting would be easy. Okay, so when we land on the island, let's tell the bad guys we're gonna split up. Then we run and get the treasure, hop on the boat, and hightail it out of there. Ah! Hey, we're making lemonade. Y'all want some? No, thank you though. All righty. Woo, that was a close one. Okay, back to the plan. So we split up, but what if they follow us? What if they try to oust us before we even get to Skeleton Island? What if they make us walk the plank? We should be ready for battle at all times. <sighs> hey, what's up? Hey, sorry to interrupt. We're running low on toilet paper. Just wanted to give you a heads up. Okay, okay, good to know, thanks. Aye, aye. Weesh. I think this boat is too small for secrets. So, what were we saying? Now let's not forget the other big threat. What if Long John Silver catches up with us at sea? They're sure to have all kinds of fighting things. Swords, bows and arrows, water balloons, cannons. Ah! 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 Oh no, this doesn't look good. He's here, he's here, Long John Silver is here. <gasps> what are we gonna? You're gonna walk the flank if once again. In case you couldn't tell, we're actually bad guys. <laughs> Check out all our swords and stuff. We're total baddies. Don't show them the secret sword stash. Oops, sorry. Um, so really, what's the plan now? We can sue them for damages and psychological distress. Or we could try to steer the ship out of the line of fire. Yeah, you do that. I'll think on how to get rid of these two. Whoa! They changed course! No fair! Just turn the cannons towards them! Um, Captain? Yes? It might be a little bit late for this, but... Take that, bad guy! <laughs> Land ho! Land ho! Land ho! Squawk! Ha! They crashed! Also look! We've reached Skeleton Island! Woohoo! I'm just gonna sail to the other side of the island before we disembark! Good thinking. I'd like to avoid Long John if we can. Um, but what about these guys? Oh, I almost forgot. Ah! Ah! Jump! Well, that was easy. You saved my life! Now she'll learn to do that. Guess I picked up a thing or two from the sea captain. Just need a little bit more practice. <laughs> So, cannon attacks aside, things were kind of looking up. Maybe we could land ho, get in, get out, grab the treasure, bing bang boom. Or maybe this pirate party was just getting started. Whoa, that was scary. Let's go on another adventure, come on. Chapter four, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. So, let's see. According to this map, the treasure is, um, Okay, mm -hmm. I'm just going north two stars over that way. Hmm, that way. Well, okay then. I guess a captain would have a good sense of direction. Uh, yeah, sorry guys. I think the map was upside down. Oh no, I hope they'll be okay. Ah, the bug just landed on me. Ah, shoo, shoo, shoo flies. You know what? I'm just going to hang by the ship. You know, keep watch. Make sure no bad guys take it. Good thinking. Ah! Snake! Where? There! Uh, I... I think they're everywhere. Wait, what's that sound? Sounds like a kookaburra. Really? I don't know. I've just always wanted to say kookaburra. Any luck with that map, Captain? I think we go that way. Ah, we're not. 
Sinking sand. I bet you this is a booby trap set to keep us away from the treasure. Classic pirates, Jeff. That must mean we're close. Cool, let's go. Uh, Captain? <laughs> oh no, this doesn't look good. Don't move. Good boy. Yep, just sniff and move along. Nothing to see here. That's it. I'm getting out of here. <laughs> Take that, pirates. Okay, let's go. Yeah. Booby traps won't work on us. <laughs> That's gotta hurt. Ow! Oh. Ow! I think maybe let's try another direction this time. Roger that. But then, as soon as we changed direction, we heard this. Ah! Ah! Food! Food! Huh? Food! Food! I think he wants food. Oh, I. I got some cookies! Oh, that was scrumptious. Well, that was weird. Please do pardon my behavior before I was simply ravenous. I've been living off grubs and worms. For how long? Oh, I've lost track of time. I guess it's been about three years, four months, two weeks, and six days. So almost three years, four months, and three weeks, give or take. Oh, wow. How'd you end up here? Shipwreck? Balloon mishap? I was captured at sea by pirates, then abandoned here. Can you believe that? Real pirates? Yeah, we can believe it. We were actually chased here by Long John Silver. <gasps> no! Yes, do you know him? He's the one who captured me. Why, he's the gnarliest, crustiest, meanest, stinkiest pirate there ever was. Yeah, we have a treasure map, and he followed us all the way here to get it. Captain Flint's treasure? Yeah. You'll never find it. Oh, come on, man. Don't be a party pooper. Why would you say that? That treasure is cursed. Cursed. Cursed? Cursed. Cursed. Cursed? When are we going to catch a break? A curse? Oh, no. Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter five. Here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Cursed? Yes. How many times do I have to tell you? Cursed. Okay, well, can you explain? Like, what kind of curse? Like, whoever finds it will turn into a frog, and then she has to find a charming prince to kiss before she turns into a pumpkin at midnight. Just spitball in here. No way. Worse. Okay, so what is it? I tell you, anyone who seeks the treasure is cursed to a life of despair. What does that mean? Well, look at me. I thought I would find the treasure, and I got captured by pirates and left to eat grubs and worms. Uh-oh. This doesn't sound good. That doesn't necessarily mean there's a curse. Maybe you're just unlucky. Well, your friend the sea captain didn't seem so lucky either. That's true. Or Long John Silver. I mean, his ship just crashed. Yeah. And we got rained on by cannon fire, fell up to our necks in sinking sand, and you almost got gobbled up by an anteater. These are all good points, yes. See, cursed. But wait, you said that anyone who looks for the treasure is cursed? Yes, indeed. Well, we already started looking, so I guess we're already cursed. Might as well keep going, am I right? Yeah, why not? Well, I've got nothing to lose. So let's keep going. Curse Schmersh, who cares? Let's get some treasure. <laughs> but maybe there was a curse because things were about to get worse. Which way should we go? How about that way? <laughs> ah, watch out! Ah! Gotcha. These guys again? Psh, I'll just whip out my sword and do some fierce pointy jabs, and they'll go running back to Long John Silver. Oops. It was scarier last time. Yeah, I haven't had much time to practice. Well, looks like we have all the swords, so you'll just do as we say. Got it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what are we doing? Walking the plank? You need a ship to do that. You're gonna give us that treasure map. The treasure map? Never. Give it. No way. Come on. Nuh-uh. Please. Keep dreaming. Hand it over. I eat it before I give it to you. Oh yeah? Yeah. We'll do it then. Okay. Mm. Delicious. How are they ever gonna get out of this one?
I didn't think you'd actually do it. Neither did I. Yeah, me neither. That was next level. Uh. <laughs> oh man, how are we gonna find the treasure now? Spit it out. Never. <laughs> well then, you're coming with us. Where? To Long John Silver. <laughs> no, not him. You know him? Yes, I'm his former prisoner. Great, I'm sure he'll be happy to see you again. Now chop chop, let's go. See, I told you my friend, we're cursed. The situation is not ideal, but we'll turn it around. You see, I'm an optimistic person. I look on the bright side of life, the sunny side, the... You were saying? Um, that everything's gonna be okay. Look on the bright side, turn lemons into lemonade, etc. Well, that's a nice outlook. It'll serve you well when you're all tied up and shot out of my cannon into the sea. Rock, rock, crap. Uh-oh. What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter six. Here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. <clears throat> so you wanna tie us up and shoot us out of cannons into the sea. Just making sure I heard you correctly. Yes, but first, give me that treasure map. I know you have it. Ha <laughs> ha! What's so funny? I'd love to give you the treasure map, but I can't. You can't? You can't, you can't. It's impossible. Then why is that? Why is that, why is that? <laughs> um, so she, uh, ate it. She ate it? Ain't it, ain't it. We were all like, what? What? Would you please quit repeating everything? Please quit repeating everything. Quack. Oh, forget it. Forget it, forget it. All right, so spit it out. Never. Then I'll just have to make you spit it out. Uh-oh, she better watch out. And so Operation Get the Treasure Map began. First, they fed me terrible flavor combos like... Tuna salad topped with hot fudge. Cake pops frosted with ranch dressing. Gross. No. Toothpaste. An orange juice. An orange juice. <laughs> Why? Why is that the worst taste in the world? <sighs> but the smorgasbord of yuckiness didn't do the trick, so they told me to spin around 27 times really fast. 27? That's oddly specific, but okay. Now smell this sock. <laughs> wow, that is so mean. Finally, they set me afloat to let my seasickness take over. Oh, I could feel the grody food commingling with the old crusty treasure map in my belly. And the raft just kept bobbing and my head was spitting and, excuse me. <laughs> they got the map. Your treasure map, sir. Oh, now it's all yucky, and the ink's all smudgy. That's just great. That's just great, that's just great. But meanwhile, I was just out there, floating, drifting further and further away. Hey, I can't swim. Hey, Captain Smallish, beauty guy. I'm sorry I didn't get your name, but please help. A ship, hey, maybe it's someone here to rescue us. Yeah, I bet Selena Barnes signaled for help, and then this ship full of good guys showed up to rescue us. Ooh, this is so exciting. Hey, down here, look. Grab the rope, we'll pull you up. Yes, I knew it, we're saved. Ooh, I hope they have some ginger ale up there. <sighs> Hi, my name's Jimmy. Hello, my name is Captain Hooksy. Oh, well, I'm pleased to meet you, Captain. That's my friend's name, too. Anyway, you came just in the right time. The super scary pirate Long John Silver is over there on Skeleton Island. Did you say Skeleton Island? Yeah, scary name, right? <laughs> That's it, mateys! Land ho! Let's go get that treasure! Woohoo! But first, tie this one up. What? I thought you were here to rescue us. And cover her mouth. She's too yappy. No! Whoa, that was scary. Let's go on another adventure, come on. Chapter seven, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. <laughs> oh, 
I never realized how much I love talking. Okay, so the ship turned out to be full of more baddies. Just my luck. We're here. Drop anchor. Uh, ow. Let's go get that treasure. Hello? Guys? Captain Hooksy? Anyone? Looks like the coast is clear. Now, I just gotta get untied. Oh no, this doesn't look good. Let's see what these pirates are up to. Okay, looks like Long John Silver's gone treasure hunting. Now, where are Captain Hooksy and her cronies? Oh, there she is, she's hot on their trail. Oh, and poor Captain Smallish and Beardy Guy are still tied up. Oh, if I could get myself untied, I would go help them. Ugh, what am I gonna do? I can't jump into the water like this. I'll sink like a stone. Hmm. It's not the best idea I've ever had, but it'll have to do. Ah! Ooh, this is kind of fun though. That was a close one. Hey. Oh, oh, the ropes come undone! Wow, that was incredible! Yeah, now untie us, pretty please. You guys are never gonna believe this. There are new pirates here. I thought it was bad enough that Long John Silver's here. Now there's this Captain Hooksy to deal with. No, 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 no! Um, something you wanna share with the group? Captain Hooksy is the other pirate that captured me. You've been captured by pirates more than once? Yes. How did you leave that out of your bio? Well, it's a little embarrassing. I almost escaped Skeleton Island a couple of years ago. I built a boat and set sail for home. Then, boom, Captain Hooksy caught me and made me work as her butler. Well, that doesn't sound so bad. But then I messed up her tea and she made me walk the plank. Always remember, two lumps of sugar, not one, two. That is so not cool. And so you wound up back here on Skeleton Island? Correct, see, told you I'm cursed. So what's she like beyond the two lumps of sugar thing? <laughs> She's a real baddie, almost as bad as Long John Silver, maybe worse. But everyone says Long John Silver is the meanest, stinkiest pirate there ever was. Oh, she's mean all right and stinking. I once saw her make a flamingo walk the plank. I mean, a flamingo. I mean, it just flew away, of course. But still, it was mean. Wow, that is so mean. Well, we have two choices. Get back to the ship and go home, no treasure, or we stick to the plan and find the gold. Maybe fight a few pirates along the way. I vote go home. I vote stay and find the treasure. Hmm, up to me with the deciding vote, huh? I say let's find the treasure. When will we ever get another chance to find real treasure? Ooh, this is so exciting. Okay, let's giddy up. Um, one problem. We don't have the map. All right. Huh. Can you remember at all what it looked like? Any landmarks? No, there were drawings of trees, but there are trees everywhere. Think, think, there has to be something you remember. Something that can help us. There was some writing on it, a poem or something. Oh yeah, maybe that's a clue. It said, it always runs, but never leaves. Leaves? Trees? Like I said, there were a lot of trees on the map. Nah, that's not it. What always runs, but never leaves? A refrigerator? Perhaps a hamster in one of those wheels. Water runs? Is there a spout somewhere on the island? No, there's no running water here. If you need fresh water, you have to go to the waterfall. <gasps> That's it, it must be buried near the waterfall. The water runs, but the waterfall never leaves. Can you lead the way? Sure. Let's go. And so we were off, off to see the wonderful wizard of, wait, no, different story. <laughs> we were off to find the treasure of Skeleton Island, nay, Treasure Island. Kids, what do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure, come on. Chapter eight, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. We were on our way to the waterfall, the location of the buried treasure, hopefully. Maybe, fingers crossed. Ooh, ah! But something was telling us the pirates were on the same path. 
Are you okay? Yeah, it just fell into this hole here. Looks freshly dug. The pirates must have been here, digging for the treasure. Ugh. Whoa! <laughs> you alright? Yes, I guess they were just being thorough. Well, guess they left no stone unturned, no hole undug. Give me a hand! Uh oh, this doesn't sound good. Shh, hear that? Dig! I don't think it's here, Captain Hooksy. Just dig! Yes, ma'am. We better hide! We're not leaving till we've dug up every bit of dirt on this island. I'm going to find this treasure if it's the last thing I do. What is it? Good tight. Thank you. But shh, who's there? No one. I don't think that's gonna work. You? I thought I left you tied up on my ship. Well, I cannonballed myself back onto the island, so. Uh oh, she better watch out. You've seen the map. You know where the treasure is, don't you? What? Me? <laughs> is that what you said? Or did you say Matt? Matt who? Yeah, I don't know anybody named Matt. Actually, my name is Matt. Oh, really? I've just been calling you Beardy Man. I didn't say Matt. I said map, as in treasure map. Oh, right, 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 right. Tell me where the treasure is, and I'll let you leave this island in one piece. OK, you drive a hard bargain. It's that way. All righty, mateys, let's go get some treasure. <coughs> Told you, cursed. Come on, I don't have all day. How are they ever going to get out of this one? Meet me at the waterfall. What? Shh. I said, meet me at the waterfall. Oh! I, I. Now march! We probably need a plan, don't we? So we think it's somewhere near this waterfall. Okay, start digging. Me? Paul, I'm not digging. Well, I don't have a shovel. Use your hands. <sighs> okay. And so I dug, and I dug, and dug, and I dug, and I dug, and I dug. You dig, and then finally, I found something. Treasure? Hey, this looks just like the one the sea captain gave me. Open it, open it. Patience is a virtue. Open it. Aye, aye. Kids, what do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter nine, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. So I was just about to open the wooden chest that I found. You know, the one that looked like it probably, most likely, very possibly contained treasure. Yeah, that one. Anyway, so I, ahem. Uh, uh, I'm waiting. Oh, yes, right, right, right. Uh, mm. Alrighty. Here I go, opening this treasure chest now. Okay, now would be a really good time for my friends to come and save me. <sighs> oh no, this doesn't look good. What is the hold up? Move, I'll do it. <laughs> ah! Ah! Hello, ladies. Long John Silver is back. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun! That's right, and I'll just be taking that treasure. K thanks, bye. I don't think so, Long John. Ah, oh, big sword! Ah, oh, another big sword! Oh. Still, guys, really? How long can two pirates sword fight? <sighs> kind of getting bored over here. Wait a minute. If they're distracted, then maybe I could just sneak away with it. Ooh, this is so exciting. Okay, easy does it. A few more steps and I'll be in the clear. <sighs> I was just about to escape the pirates and get the treasure. Amazing, right? And then I looked up and saw this. We're coming down to save you. No, shh, I'm about to make a clean getaway. What did she say? I don't know, what did you say? Uh, shh, thank you, but no thank you, I'm good. What? 
I, I think she said thank you. Oh, thank you. Wow. Good. Aw, that's nice. Well, let's go. yippee ki -yay, Buccaneers. Huh? Meow, meow. And just when I was about to sneak away from the pirates, once and for all, I gotta go and get rescued. Oh no, I hope they'll be okay. Well, what do we have here? You just wait till I get out of here. We're gonna teach you a lesson. Are ya? Yes, we will, old chap. Looks like I gotta rescue the rescuers. Okay, think Jimmy. Hey, pirates! No! It's deep! I can't see without my swim goggles! Quit splashing me! I didn't splash, you splashed! It's gone! My treasure is gone! Your treasure? It's my treasure! Come on, guys, hop up! We have to go while the getting's good! AKA, let's vamoose, scram, make like a tree and leaf, shake a leg, giddy up! Uh, Jimmy? Mm -hmm. Kids, what do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure, come on! Chapter 10, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Are you going somewhere? Us? No, why would we go anywhere? We love this island, it's paradise. Plus, you guys are so nice. Are you being sarcastic? No! I think you are. Well, it doesn't matter anyway, because we stole your ship. No. Yep, look. <gasps> no! Oh no, 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 no! Told you we were cursed! Found it! <gasps> I found the treasure! Woohoo! It's mine! How are they ever gonna get out of this one? Hooks off! I saw it first! Nuh uh! Yeah, uh huh! Paper, rock, scissors for it! Fine! Paper, paper rock, rock, scissors, scissors shoot! shoot. You can't use hook. It's not paper, rock, scissors, hook. One more. For real this time. Paper, rock, scissors. Hey, look over there. Where? Haha, <laughs> gotcha. I win. I win. No fair. Hey, it's just full of dirt and rocks. It was that girl. She stole my treasure. Let me at her. Yikes. Scary, right? I would be frightened, but nope because we hightailed it out of there while they were playing rock, paper, scissors. Made it to the ship, baby. Now, we just gotta set sail before the bad guys find out. Take that, bad guy. Pull up anchor, Captain. Aye, aye. And hoist the sails. Aye, aye. Now let's go. I said let's go. Did you pull the anchor? Yeah. Hoist the sails? Yeah. Why aren't we moving? No wind? I tell you, we're cursed. Hello. Waiting for us? Ah, the pirates. Whoa. Ow, and I fell? I am cursed. I have the worst luck in the world. Um, Jimmy. What? We're moving. We are? We are. Ah. Woohoo! Bye-bye, pirates. See you never. Yay! Woo, that was a close one. We did it, gang. And woo, what an adventure. Pirates, sinking sand, cannonballs, sword fights, buried treasure. Wait, the treasure! That was our one chance to get away, Jimmy. I know it's sad, but we had to leave it behind. Did we? I pulled the old classic switcheroo, put the rich stuff in my boots, and filled the treasure chest with dirt and rocks while the pirates weren't looking. Ah, amazing! Lovely! The diamonds were really poking my feet when we were running to the ship, but it was all worth it. Now let's just get home and try to live happily ever after, or something like that. Aye aye, Captain. Wait, that's me, I'm the captain. How much is there? I get 10%, remember? Oh, do you guys mind dropping me off in England? That would be lovely. And would you mind untying me? That was such a great ending. Thanks for coming to Storytime. See you next time. Bye. 
Hi kids! Welcome to Storytime at Cool School with me, Miss Booksy. Today we're reading Sleeping Beauty. Chapter 1, here we go! Wiggle, snap, story time! Once upon a time, in an enchanted land far, far away, there lived a king and a queen. One day, after many, many years of hoping for a baby, the king and queen had a little baby girl a princess named Briar Rose. Everyone in the land was so excited about the new baby princess, especially the fairies. You see, fairies love babies. Aw, that's so sweet. So the fairies all got together to plan a party to celebrate little Briar Rose. Fairies also love parties. <laughs> Ooh, I love the streamers, Twinkles. Thanks, boss. And Sparkle, those cupcakes look scrumptious. Buttercup, how is the music coming? Great, I've almost got the speakers set up. Speakers work. Excellent. Everything was shaping up for a wonderful party. Well, all except for one teeny tiny detail that everyone overlooked, no one had invited Grimsley. Grimsley was not like the other fairies. The other fairies liked to flit and flutter about, singing sweet songs and sprinkling pixie glitter on everything. And Grimsley, well, Grimsley liked to do sort of mischievous things like gluing fairies' wings together. We're stuck! And filling the pixie glitter jars with dirt. And she absolutely loved to put curses on the other fairies. Curse you! I turn you into a frog! Hey! Wow, that is so mean. Grimsley just wasn't very nice. Maybe that's why it never occurred to any of the other fairies to invite her. Anyway, the party started out like any other fairy party. It was lots of fun and everyone was happy until... What? I just came to bring a present for the baby. Oh, how lovely. Thank you. The king and queen opened Grimsley's present, but they were confused. What is this? A spindle? Briar Rose is far too young to play with a spindle. See kids, a spindle is a sharp, pointy thing used to make yarn. So not exactly a good gift for a baby. But then Grimsley said, You didn't read the card. It explains the curse. A curse? Oh no. This is gibberish. It says here that when Briar Rose turns 16, she'll prick her finger on a spindle and fall into a hundred years sleep. The only thing that will wake her is true love. And good luck with that. Hard to find love when you're nothing. What did she say? She just put a curse on Briar Rose. A purse? A curse. Oh no, curses are bad. That's right kids, curses are bad, especially when they're from an angry fairy. Grimsley flew away, but the damage was done. Everyone was majorly bummed out. The next day, the king and queen banned Grimsley from the kingdom and ordered that all spindles be thrown away. This is a no spindle zone, no spindles and it remained a no-spindle zone for exactly 16 years. And then one day, a nearly grown-up Briar Rose went exploring around the castle. <laughs> hmm, I don't know about this. What you doing? I'm spinning. <laughs> really? This is how I spin. <laughs> Whoa! Oh. <laughs> Makes me dizzy, though. <laughs> I'm spinning yarn. Then I'll make you a pretty dress. Oh, that's so nice of you. Hey, I've never seen you around here before. Are you new? I've been around for years, but no one visits me much. Oh, well, now that I know you're here, I'll come and visit you every day. <laughs> hey, could I try? Ooh, I poked myself. Ugh, it's not too bad, though. It only hurts a little bit. Too bad. She was actually kind of sweet. Oh, well. Sleep tight. Don't let the bed bugs bite. That can't be. Briar Rose had fallen into a deep sleep. Oh no, just like the curse said she would. When she didn't show up for dinner, the king and queen began to worry. Everyone went looking for her. Briar Rose! Briar Rose, where are you? When they found her sleeping, the spindle beside her, they all knew that Grimsley was to blame. The king and queen were so upset, but Grand Fairy, the oldest and wisest of all the fairies, had an idea. I can cast a spell that will make everyone in the castle fall asleep and only wake when the princess wakes. Then it will be as if no time has passed at all. The king and queen agreed to it. Grand Fairy summoned all the magic she could, and with a wave of her fairy wand, everyone fell asleep. 
Yay, magic to the rescue. Let's keep reading. Chapter two, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Yep, still sleeping. And they slept and slept and slept. Nothing could wake them up. Over the years, the trees grew around the castle like a jungle, and eventually people kind of just forgot that it had ever even existed. But inside the castle, Briar Rose looked exactly as she did the day she fell asleep. Luckily, Grimsley hadn't cursed her dreams, and Briar Rose had plenty of sweet dreams. One time, she dreamed she lived in a land of puppies, just puppies everywhere for as far as the eye could see. Oh, so cute. Puppies! <laughs> and then another time, the puppies were replaced by kittens. <gasps> kittens! <laughs> Actually, there were lots of dreams like that. Puppies, kittens, ponies, unicorns, hamsters, unicorn hamsters. Pretty much anything cute slash awesome and Briar Rose dreamt about it. But Briar Rose's favorite dream was the one with the prince. Ah, the prince. The prince dream always started the same. Briar Rose would wake up bright and early. Then I would walk into the garden where all the birds and woodland creatures would come out to greet me. Hi, Briar Rose. Briar Rose is here. We love you, Briar Rose. I would do the usual dream stuff, like dance around and sing with the animals. But then a handsome prince arrives on horseback. That prince is so handsome. He is, of course, smitten with me and declares he is in love with me at first sight. Oh, princess, I'm in love with you at first sight. Marry me. I can't live without you. I hop onto his horse and we fly around. What? It's a dream. Horses fly in my dream. <laughs> anyway, then he whisks me away to his kingdom and we live happily ever after. <sighs> it's my favorite dream. But it was just that, a dream. Oddly enough, there was a prince from a nearby kingdom who looked a lot like the prince in Briar Rose's dream. His name was Prince John. Prince John and his brother Peter grew up hearing the legend of the sleeping princess and the true love that would save her. Everyone said her castle was somewhere deep in the woods, but no one had been able to find it. No way. I've been all through those woods. That's all just fairy tale stuff. You don't know for sure. It could be true. Yeah, right. Next you're going to tell me the fairies are real. But remember, kids, fairies are real. And they were on the lookout for a prince who might be Briar Rose's one true love. Ooh, this is so exciting. He seems like a nice boy. He doesn't even believe in fairies. No, not that one. The other one. The one who looks all dreamy-eyed whenever anyone mentions the princess. Oh, that one. Yes, he does seem nice. We have to lead him to the castle. Then he'll find Briar Rose. And somehow, they'll fall in love. Haven't figured that part out yet. Maybe we could just sprinkle him with some pixie glitter. Did you hear something? Huh? Gazoontite. Could have sworn I heard a tiny sneeze. Heh, <laughs> it was probably the fairies. Oh look, he's handsome too. Let's go tell Grand Fairy and Sparkle that we found the perfect prince. Twinkles and Buttercup flew back towards the castle, excited to tell the other good fairies that they had found a prince for Briar Rose. But they were suddenly stopped in their tracks. Uh, watch out! Hello, Stinkle, Butterpoop. What's up? It's Twinkles! And Buttercup. What are you doing here, Grimsley? You were banned. Yes, but the king and queen who banned me are fast asleep. What are they gonna do? Snore me to death? Well, they're gonna be awake soon because we found a charming young prince to come break the curse. Yeah, we're gonna tell Grand Fairy and Sparkle right now! You are, huh? It'd be a shame if you couldn't do that. What do you mean? What's the matter? Mean fairy got your tongue? <laughs> okay, have fun with that. See ya! And I will see ya. Because there is no way I'm going to let you break my curse and spoil all my fun! Ooh, I didn't see that coming. Let's keep reading. Chapter 3, here we go! Wiggle, snap, story time! First, let's check on Briar Rose. Still sleeping. Buttercup and Twinkles thought that they had discovered the perfect match for Briar Rose when they found Prince John. 
But after Grimsley's curse, they couldn't speak. So how were they gonna tell Grand Fairy and Sparkles? What would you do if you were there? Oh, I love charades! A bird, a plane, Superman? I think they're trying to say that a bird attacked them. Why don't you just write it down? None of us know how to read or write. Oh, right. They don't teach that at fairy school. How about drawing? Can you guys draw out what you're trying to say? Grimsley casting a spell and they can't talk. Oh, Grimsley cursed you and took your voices. But why? Because they fell in love with the prince. Huh? Oh, oh, I know. They found the prince to break the spell. And then Grimsley must have found out and cursed them so they couldn't tell anyone. Now tell us how to find that prince. Buttercup and Twinkles drew out directions on how to get to the prince's castle, and Grand Fairy and Sparkle set out to find him. Yay, I'm so happy. Let's check on Briar Rose again and see how things are going with her. Still snoozing away. <laughs> Let's see what she's dreaming about. Ah, it's the one about the prince. Really looks like true love, doesn't it? But wait, what's that? It's the bad fairy Grimsley. Oh no, that's not good. We only want Briar Rose to have sweet dreams. Well, let's get back to the story. When Grand Fairy and Sparkle got to the castle, they scooped it out detective style. Got him, let's go. Remember, try not to scare him. Got it. Hi. <laughs> He's out cold. Ooh, that's gotta hurt. Hey, just like Briar Rose. She's sleeping, he's sleeping. Smash me to heaven. Hello, Prince. Wake up. Oh, Prince. Here, allow me. Hey, wake up. Uh. Don't be scared. We're fairies, and we've come to tell you about your true love. Huh? But what the good fairies didn't know, boys and girls, is that they were talking to the wrong prince, Prince Peter. Ugh. The right prince, Prince John, was far away. See, Grimsley had beaten Good Fairy and Sparkle to the castle and captured Prince John. That's right, kids. Grimsley would stop at nothing to foil the good fairy's effort to break her spell. What? No, that can't be. Where am I? You're in the Enchanted Kingdom, the land of magic and fairies. And who are you? I'm Grimsley, the greatest fairy of them all. Oh, very impressive. And why am I tied up? Well, I may as well tell you. You are supposed to fall in love with a princess named Briar Rose, aka Sleeping Beauty. I am? Yes, but she's cursed to sleep for 100 years, and I can't have you going to break the curse. Wait, are you talking about THE Sleeping Beauty? I knew she was real. But wait! Why don't you want me to break the curse? I don't want you to break the curse because I'm the one who cursed her. But why did you curse her? Because I'm a bad fairy and that's what I do. Now zip it before I curse you too. Prince John had so many more questions, but he decided he'd better do as Grimsley said and zip it. He soon fell asleep and had a dream, a very sweet dream about a lovely princess. Oh no, this doesn't look good. Let's keep reading. Chapter four, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Prince John had fallen asleep and was dreaming of a princess. It was just a dream, but it felt so real. So real that when he woke up, he was very disappointed to find that he was still tied up at Grimsley's. The good news was the bad fairy was nowhere to be seen. Prince John knew that this was his chance. I have to escape. <clears throat> huh, that was easy. Yeah, fun fact, fairies are terrible at tying knots. That's why they never wear shoes with any laces. Oh, now I get it. Once he was untied, Prince John hightailed it out of there, but he quickly found out he had no idea where he was or where he should go. Meanwhile, Briar was still in her deep sleep, dreaming a sweet dream about her prince. Ah, her dashing prince. But then something weird happened. Her prince suddenly changed into someone else. Another prince. But this prince was all wrong. He said, No, I don't think this is true love. Sorry. Huh? That part wasn't a dream. You see, Grand Fairy and Sparkle had brought Prince Peter to see Briar Rose. 
They thought he would take one look at Briar Rose and realize he was madly in love with her, but he just saw a sleeping princess with a little bit of drool on her cheek. They asked him, So, are you in love? And Prince Peter replied, You guessed it. No, I don't think this is true love. Sorry. Are you sure? Yeah, no. Why did you think we'd be in love anyway? She's cursing to a deep sleep, and only her true love can wake her up. We thought that might be you. Whoa, this is the legendary Sleeping Beauty. My brother is always going on and on and on about her. It's like he's in love with her or something. Wait, hold up. You have a brother? Yeah. That must be who Twinkles and Buttercup saw. Where is he? I don't know. I saw him leaving with some little lady. Hey, come to think of it, she had wings just like you guys. Grimsley! We have to go rescue that prince! Let's go! Okay, I guess I'll just see myself out. <laughs> that was so funny. The good fairies set off to find Grimsley's hideout, but they wouldn't find Prince John there. He was wandering the enchanted forest trying to get to Sleeping Beauty's castle. It must be around here somewhere. Prince John was determined to find Briar Rose. He trudged through the mud. He swam through alligator-infested waters. He leapt over pits of snakes. Nothing could stop him. That is, until he got to a very large, very tall brick wall covered in vines. Whoa, that is one big wall. Whatever, I'll just climb up the vines. Ow, ow, ooh, ah, ugh, ah. You see, the wall was covered in rose vines and prickly thorns, otherwise known as... <gasps> Briars. That's right, kids. Thorny bushes are also known as briars. Prince John wondered if this might be significant. Hey, briars, roses, briar rose. I bet briar rose is on the other side of this wall. And she was. Only trouble was, Prince John would have to climb over the very ouchy wall of thorny briars. But he was determined. The fate of true love kept him going strong. Ah, true love. Ow! Ow! Ooh! Ouch! Ooh! Ow! About a hundred owls later, and Prince John was at the top of the wall. <gasps> Is this Sleeping Beauty's castle? Wait, what's that noise? That sounds like snoring. This is it! I made it! Woohoo! <laughs> I'm okay. Time to go break the spell. Looks like we're on our way to a happy ending, kids. But wouldn't you know it, trouble was a Bruin in another part of the Enchanted Forest. Grand Fairy and Sparkle had just made it to Grimsley's hideout and found a very angry Grimsley. And kids, when fairies get angry, watch out. You, you did this. Did what? Released my prisoner. Oh, you mean Briar Rose's one true love? We did it. That looks like he's on his way to break the spell, doesn't it? Not if I get there first. And Grimsley shot out like a cannon. What do you think she's gonna do? I don't know, but we better stop her. Oh, uh, not again. The good fairies knew that they had to stop Grimsley. It was a race against time, good versus evil, but love must prevail. Whoa, that was scary. Let's keep reading. Chapter five, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Prince John had just made it to the sleeping castle. Now, let's go save the princess. Prince John wandered the castle looking for Briar Rose's room, which as it turns out, wasn't too difficult. Well, that was easy. <laughs> All right. Prince John opened the door. You might imagine something like this happened next. My prince, my one true love. Marry me. Oh, so cute. But what really happened is this. Uh, hey, Briar Rose. Um, I think I'm supposed to wake you up. I mean, I don't mean to sound presumptuous or anything, but I might be your true love. It's destiny or something. Um, I guess I'll wait here until you wake up. I'm sorry. This is really awkward. I'm just going to wait outside. Oh, I'm okay. <laughs> that was so funny. <gasps> what was that? Sorry, uh, I just fell. <laughs> Briar Rose, you're awake. Who are... <gasps> you're my prince from the dreams. Huh? You dreamed of me? Yeah. Wait, 
Am I awake or is this another dream? Oh, please, please, pretty, please tell me I'm really awake. You're really awake. And she was. Sleeping Beauty was no longer sleeping. Her true love had awakened her by being clumsy and noisy. How romantic. Yay, I'm so happy. Woohoo! <laughs> Wait, what year is it? How long was I out for? Did you hear me snoring? Oh gosh, do I have drool on my face? Please tell me I don't have drool on my face. All good. Thank goodness. <laughs> so, you broke the spell, huh? <laughs> yes, I'm apparently your one true love. I mean, if it's okay with you. Yeah, I mean, I feel like I already know everything about you. This is so weird, <laughs> but cool. But just as the two lovebirds were getting to know each other, they heard a very odd noise. What is that? It sounds like an airplane. Okay, but what is that? Oh, <laughs> I, I guess those were invented after you were cursed. It's a thing you can fly around in. Oh, what? Cool! Wait, how long was I asleep? Like, almost a full hundred years. Wow, that is so cool. So I'm really, like, over a hundred years old? <laughs> is my hair gray? No, it's brown. Um, <laughs> I think we should be more focused on that noise, because it sounds like it's coming right this way. I'm okay. Oh, hello, Briar Rose. You're up. Who are you? It's the bad fairy. We have to run. Oh, oh. Oh, my legs are asleep. I can't move. Uh, watch out! I am Grimsley, the greatest fairy of evil, and I curse you. But before she could finish her curse, Briar Rose said, Pull me out of here! <sighs> hey, where'd they go? Once they got out of the castle, Briar Rose tried to wake up the rest of her body. Better? Yeah, I think so. Okay, good. Because <laughs> it's time to run! Where are we going to go? I don't know. But wherever they ran, Grimsley was going to follow. And she was working up her worst curse yet. A curse? Oh, no. Let's keep reading. Chapter 6. Here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Briar Rose and Prince John were on the run from the bad fairy Grimsley. Only problem was they didn't know where to go. So they kind of just ran around freaking out. Ah! Meanwhile, since the 100 years of sleeping spell had been broken, the rest of the castle was waking up. We're awake. Hurrah! But the hurrahs stopped when they found that Briar Rose was not in her room. Where's the princess? <gasps> the princess is missing. That's when, rather conveniently, the good fairies arrived. Grand Fairy and Sparkle were exhausted from flying all over, trying to undo Grimsley's mischief. But they had a job to do, and good fairies never give up. Aw, that is so nice. So, we have some good news and some bad news. Good news is the spell has been broken! Yay! But the bad news... What are they doing? Oh, Grimsley cursed them and took their voices! They're trying to tell you the bad news! Which is that Grimsley is planning another curse. And we're not sure what she's gonna do, but it's probably very, very, very bad. Oh no! She must have taken Briar Rose! Don't worry, we'll find her. Let's go, gang! Back in the forest, Briar Rose and Prince John had found what they thought was a great hiding spot. Let's just hang out here for a bit, and maybe Grimsley will just give up and leave. But that proved to be wishful thinking, because guess who showed up? Oh no, run! Hey guys, what's up? Are we playing hide and seek? Grimsley! <laughs> yep, Grimsley had found them. Not good. Hmm, let's see. What sort of evil spell should I cast? I could turn you into frog. That's always fun. Oh, or how about I turn Briar Rose into a frog and Prince John into a fly? And then Briar the frog will mm. eat John the fly. <laughs> what do you say? Uh, no thanks. Oh, I could turn you into donkeys. Have people, have horse, maybe turn you into statues. Oh, I know. I won't turn you into anything at all. You won't? No. I'll turn myself into... A dragon? Ah, this is scary. What are we going to do? Ah, I don't know. Run? Okay, maybe not. 
Unfortunately, help was on the way. The good fairies were flying at top speed on the hunt for Grimsley, ready to stop her in her evil tracks. Uh oh! Uh, what's our plan again? Find Grimsley and trap her in this bag. Yeah, I think we'll need a bigger bag. I have an idea. Follow me. The good fairies flew right at Grimsley's face. You know, the one that was breathing fire at everyone? Usually not a good idea, but... Pixie Glitter, now! Hey, get out of here! I can't see! Ow! I burned myself! Well, maybe you should stop breathing fire! Never! Ow! Ha! You're in trouble, villain! Give it up, Grimsley! You're a thief! Yeah, Prince John and Briar Rose have true love. They broke the spell. Yeah, love wins. This was like a poison to Grimsley. Bad fairies do not like love. Ugh, gross. Don't invite me to the wedding. Don't worry, you're not going anywhere. Except fairy jail. Is that a thing? We'll figure it out. The important thing was that the day was saved. Grimsley was defeated and forced to undo all her evil spells. The Twinkles and Buttercup got their voices back and the Enchanted Kingdom was awake and happy. Normally, we'd say that this was a happy ending, but since Briar Rose and John only just met, let's call this one a happy beginning. That was such a great ending. Thanks for coming to Storytime. See you next time. Bye. <laughs>